Well, hi, good morning. Thank you so much for coming and joining me here in my shop on March 31st, last day of March, to work on this very nice uh, clock radio here. Just putting a little soap on the uh, cord. Start cleaning that off because it looks terrible. You gotta wonder. This is probably what the radio would have looked like had it not been cleaned repeatedly by various people over the years. You know, you know, can you see how bad this cord is? It's so terrible. Terrible. So, um, yesterday I checked out the radio, tested the tubes, found one to be really so weak it probably stopped the radio from operating. And the output tube is also weak, but not enough to stop the radio from operating. But probably I'll end up replacing that uh, at some point. <coughs> this needs a toothbrush to do this. So today what I hope to do is uh, take the radio out, examine it, uh, examine the parts. Pretty sure no work's been done in here. And uh, perhaps start <coughs> replacing. Some parts, the uh, filter capacitor in here was pretty weird looking. It's kind of a, somebody else has done a little bit of work in, in the radio. So I want to take a look at all these things. So I'm going to finish cleaning this cord up and then we're going to get busy doing that stuff. So you might think taking a radio out of a cabinet is just a, a regular thing, but there's issues. The antenna, the speaker, how things are held in. Um, hmm. So I think I see, I do, I see a flathead screw way back there. I see another one way back there. And I see a third one down at the bottom there. So I have the feeling, if I take those three screws out, the whole show's coming out, speaker and all. I think. I think it's all on a metal plate or something in there. I'm gonna get these knobs off. Wow, okay, these really went on tight. They must go into plastic. Oh, this is loose. The screw is loose. So it's got a machine thread on it. Uh, it's often the case when the, the screws go into plastic. Not always. Let's see what this one's like. Okay, so I lost that one inside. I think it's this one here. Don't see any others. Let's see what happens here. Okay, it was a machine screw the same as the other. tape in there and all kinds of stuff. Okay, now I just set this down. Let's take a look at the speaker. Ooh. Of course, the clock has come out, of course. Those uh, grommets look kind of funny, those black grommets down here. Just sitting there, there's one up here. Ooh. It's got masking tape trying to hold it. Ooh, 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 ooh. This is totally loose. Okay. I'm going to lay this right, oh boy, right down on its face. I'll be laying it right on that red pointer here. I don't want to do that. It looks like I can put it on its side like this. Okay, I got a part here that's sitting on the volume control, but that's not too bad. That's okay for now. 
Okay, what do we got here? Let's bring it to the other side. Put this board over here. Got these, there's one more screw floating around. Where did it end up? I didn't see it come falling out. Okay, well I guess it's caught up in the radio somewhere. Uh, yeah, we're gonna bring it a little closer here. Okay, first thing of interest are these two parts here. Someone has installed, and here's the old one, is this big capacitor here. And they appear to have just left it in. Yep, they did. I can see a blue wire and a red wire coming from the capacitor going to the positive lead of these two. Now, what size are these? This is a 47, 160 volt, probably the other one's very same. So they put two 50 microfarad capacitors in and they boosted this one. Now, chances are this guy is, is a bad actor anyway. And he really needs to come out or be cut away. Um, 50 is pretty good. How big is this big guy? Can we see? Is it written on it somewhere? Yeah, it's, I think it might be covered by the band here. Um, okay, now I do have a schematic for this, I'm pretty sure. So I'm going to stop for a minute study the schematic. Okay, let's take a look at some of the uh, documentation that I've got. All this has come from Radio Museum. The 505 pin-up. Pin-up? They just call it a hang-up. Hang this up on the wall up. Okay, and so this is the alignment instructions here on this page, and you can see the original contro uh, uh, control knobs where it looked like they're white plastic go with a white cabinet, and I've got these uh, red ones, which I think will be okay. Anyway, let's look at another bit of information here. There's quite a few pages on this little radio. So here's one giving the uh, parts list, and you can see it's identifying this big capacitor, which I'm about to remove, I'm pretty sure, as number 5, and we can see there's a 5A and a 5B over here, 5A and 5B, 150 volt, 20 and 40, so what's in there right now, somebody has installed two 50s and paralleled them with the old capacitor as well, 50s are bigger than this. I'm going to cut the old capacitor out, they, they should have cut it out too, I'm surprised they left it in. They, they, they should have cut it out. You can leave it physically in place if you want, you know, for the look of it, if that is somehow important, but you cut the wires off. So that's the main thing we wanted to find out, was what is the actual size of this part. I think you got another diagram here worth looking at. This one. Now this is the radio has come with some interesting information here. Um, this is a chart showing each tube so 12BE6, 12BA, 12AT6, showing the voltages, and interestingly enough, the voltages read by different types of voltmeters. So this is VTVM, virtually infinite input impedance, you can almost think of it that way. 20,000 ohms per volt, okay, uh, that's a good portable voltmeter, but the pointer in the voltmeter is still driven by current taken out of the circuit under test. And then the last one is your lousy pocket voltmeter that maybe some repair guys would have and be using. And you can look at the difference in the voltages here. So if you use a good meter, you get four and a half volts. If you use a lousy one, you'll see two. And let's see if there's, now this is gonna happen mostly on the higher impedance circuits. So just look, now here's one here. You're gonna read 60 volts, but with a lousy meter, it's gonna look like 28 volts. That's quite a difference. And most of them aren't any different. 
probably because the impedance of the circuit under test is actually quite low compared to any of these meters. So, interesting. Often they mention the type of voltmeter used to attain the measurements that they're reporting, uh, but I've never seen a chart laying them out like this. That's really, really quite interesting. What do we got over here? Resistance tests. So also something that's uh, sometimes not included. In fact, this information is often not included at all. So we have resistance readings, we have voltage readings. Wow, that's really useful information. So we're going to make use of this at some point. At some point. But for now, it's all about this capacitor. Um, now why wouldn't I just leave it? You know, you probably could just leave it connected and just pretend it's not there and ignore it. But um, considering that the additional capacitance is larger yet and probably in good shape. Make sure I'm cutting one and only one wire. Okay, we're going to shorten it up here. And this red one. So there's a ground wire involved too, but I'm going to leave that connected. So I'm going to leave this part in here. It's not doing anybody any harm. So it looks to me like the original, see, see how long this is? I think the original was shorter. And so it stood from the chassis up to about maybe where my thumb is. And somebody put this long one in, they had to drop it all the way in here. And uh, kind of jam it up against the speaker pretty well. Okay, so first thing done, but that's not gonna make any difference in the operation of the radio, I don't think. Um, what is of interest are these old capacitors. One, two, three, four. And I bet you there's more hidden away in there. Four. So I think there's one way in behind here. Oh boy, how am I ever gonna get at that? There is, there's one way in behind. Yikes. Does, does this chassis plate come off the rest? Oh, I think it does. In fact, this screw is loose down here. Oh my gosh, what are you looking at? Oh, I need to do something I don't normally do, which is kind of re-record a section because the whole time I've been talking for the last three or four minutes, the camera's been staring over here. So, okay. So what I was talking about was this capacitor and if you look at how long it is and I'm going to guess the original was shorter and just kind of sat on the top here of the chassis and somebody's replaced it and put this long guy in and then further to that somebody came along and more or less replaced this one or augmented it anyway with these two. So that's probably the story there. Um, so I was counting up the wax capacitors in here. One, two, three, four. All I can get at them. Uh, fairly a little tough back in here. But there's one way up in here. Way up in the back here. How would I ever get to that? Well, as it turns out, this metal plate everything is mounted on is screwed, screwed on with this screw and another one down here that's loose in fact. It's practically falling out. You can take that, take those screws out and I believe this plate will then turn independent of all this and the uh, front panel here. Take it off and get at the uh, rest of them. There's a nut on the back of the screw. Let's try it. I just noticed there's a light bulb in this radio too. Did, did the light come on? I don't think a light came on. a split washer there to lock on the nut and bolt, which is no doubt come loose on the other side. Can I put, how can I put this? I can put this right like this. Where, where, where'd it go? It's under here. 
not loose. It's uh oh, there's no nut on the bottom. It's just being held by uh, I don't know what. The same nut, same screw. Ah, oh, the screw that has lost its nut. That would give it a high pitched voice, wouldn't it? Now I've taken the screws out. How come things didn't just fall apart? What's going on here? Things look soldered. Oh, it's another screw. Why would they bother with another screw right here? They did. I already see it under the dust. Okay, now things are starting to fall apart. Dust on this radio once you get a get get in behind here. The two screws that were in are the, that's the reason the whole thing wasn't falling uh, falling apart. The two screws here were holding things fairly well. Okay, well how's this going to help now? Got it loose. Which way do I want to go? This I guess I can kind of work in there a little bit. What am I tugging on? Tugging on some a couple of wires. Don't pull on that. There's just three three wires. The wires going to the clock motor probably is what this is. Pull on them a bit. So there must be one more down here. Yeah, there is. What is this? What is this thing? Looks like uh, um, it looks like maybe maybe if we unsolder this wire, this thing will swing out quite a bit. It's already swung out quite a bit. No, I don't think it'll get any further. I think this is it. This is what I got to work with. I can hook it in here like this. There. Okay. Stand up. No, it won't stand up. There we go. Okay, I can see them all, I can get at them all. I got a schematic, I can figure out what size they are. Should we just proceed? I think so. I think you just change these capacitors. One, two, three, four, five of them. And uh, do it carefully, I hope we don't make a mistake, and then we'll operate the radio. Okay, so I've managed to kind of spread it out here into a way that's very helpful for doing work. You can see all the parts in it. Everything's accessible now. Somebody's hair. Um, so I would like to take one of these out and give it a test. And maybe the first one to start with is actually this one up here, just because it doesn't look like the rest of them. The rest of them are down here. This one's up here. That's enough. Look power cord comes in, it goes right to this terminal, and this capacitor is hooked up right to this power terminal, and then it's going over here to what looks like it could be a grounding point, because there's a wire coming up to the frame here, and it looks like it's coming off the motor frame. The motor frame is obviously hooked up to the thing here, so this capacitor is right across the power line. That is a good one to start with. Now, um, along with, let me cut the other end off first here. And then even though it's pretty obvious what terminal that came from, I cannot predict what's going to happen in the next minute. I could get distracted here in my house, and be gone for an hour and a half when I come back. <laughs> Can't remember, hey, where'd this come from? Okay, so this has come off of the... Uh, ground terminal right here. So I don't want to worry about that. I kind of wondered if these wires would pop off. Okay, in fact, now I can swing this whole piece on this other wire, get it right out of here. That's even better. Better all the time. Okay, this one ends off.
too. What have they done down here? I'm trying to leave enough wire on the capacitor that we can test it here, but I'm not sure I'm going to be able to do that. Just bit it right off the end. So we won't be able to test this one. What's going on there? So this is a speaker terminal. So they're grounding one side of the speaker. But you know what it looks like? And now that I, it doesn't look like it's connected properly. Let's take a uh, look with a close up camera here. See what we can see. My autofocus is going to do it. No, no autofocus. So let's put it like this. Bear with me a moment. Oh, there goes the autofocus. Well, while you're looking at that, I'm going to turn off the autofocus here on that camera. Okay. Now, from this angle, I mean, it looks like a soldered up connection. Let me come at it from the other angle here. You can see that, in fact, there's, it's popped out. So, uh, very poorly done. Ground connection there. Okay, so I can solve all that when I put the new capacitor in. And uh, how big is this capacitor? What size is it? Mica Mold Radio Corporation. It might make you think this is a mica capacitor, but it certainly isn't. Mica Mold. Get mold on your mica? Type. I don't think the type is important. This end here uh, has the uh, outside foil band on it under my thumb, thumb there. And that's the one that was hooked up to ground. That makes, that makes sense. That means the ground kind of acts as a shield on the capacitor. But it's not important to this one particularly. This is right across the power line. Okay, too bad we can't test it. 0.05, I'm running out of 0.05s. Okay, first capacitor is done. I used an X-type safety capacitor to go in there because it's right across the power line. Now, next one to do. Look at this one jumping out at me. So this guy is coming from the center of the volume control. So it's carrying the audio. So if it were weak, then conceivably the audio would be uh, restricted. This is a restricted audio radio, isn't it? So we can cut this guy out. I'm going to leave the leads behind. Lots of lead behind. And this one we can test see what's up with it and maybe this is an example of them. <laughs> Can anybody read a value on that? I'll have to get the value off of the uh, schematic. Okay, let's go over here and what we will do is we're going to do a test with this guy. This is going to put a voltage across the capacitor, a DC voltage. If there's any current going through the capacitor, then this magic eye will close. When I first hit the switch here to put the uh, charge on the capacitor, there will be a current flow, so the eye will close, but then moments later will open up. If it's a good one. Wow, that opened right up. That's pretty impressive. Let's try 150 volts. So it didn't open. So a good capacitor like this would open all the way to the limit here, 450 volts. So this is typical. This is very typical of capacitors in old radios. Probably in some situations, uh, not very harmful. 
uh, to have a little bit of a leak in the capacitor. But in other situations, very bad news. So we're going to put a new one in here. I will find out on the uh, schematic just what he's supposed to be. Well, it turns out the uh, schematic I'm looking at is in conflict with the part layout on the radio. They don't match. And uh, so it would be a smart idea if I uh, scrape this off here. There we are. Always use a Bowie knife for scraping your capacitors. scrape this dirty wax off and then you can read the uh, plastic again. There it is right there, 0.05. Ooh, 0 0.005. Yeah, 0 0.005. Okay, let's look at the uh, information I've got, 0 0.005. Okay, so uh, this is a list of parts. Um, this comes with this diagram for the top. There's another diagram on another page showing what's underneath, which we can't see on this page right now, but we just look at this. Identification codes and installation notes for the capacitors. It's kind of interesting. They describe the function of each capacitor that's in there. So capacitor number 7, which is a 0.01, is an output plate bypass capacitor. So output tube, plate output plate from the output tube, output tube plate, yeah, whatever. Anyway, it just shows you what the purpose of each capacitor is, which is really helpful, except these diagram numbers point to the wrong capacitors and oh, this doesn't add up. But see, there's 1.005, if we come across audio coupling, and that's certainly what this capacitor is doing. It's coupling the audio from the volume control onward to the uh, grid of the uh, the uh, preamp triode, if I can call it that. So that's got to be the number. We saw it, 0 0.005. We see it here. It's got to be the case. Okay. Joule model 505 pinup. I think it looks just like this. Okay, not to sweat on that. We know what cap capacitor size, so let me do it. Okay. Now. I'm going to get rid of this old capacitor. Who, who cares about it? It's not even original. Leave the wire hanging. There we go. Get this guy out of here. Oh, it's strapped in. I'll get it out when I get around the other side. And let's get rid of these wires here. Just because. Okay, there's the new capacitor in. Now, uh, which one's next? Why don't we go after this one? So, positionally, this is the blocking capacitor, blocking B plus voltage from the output tube. Okay, so that is the output tube right there. And uh, but when I say positionally, it's looking at a diagram. The diagram is suggesting what this is. So this is a very important capacitor. This one you can't tolerate any leaks because a tiny charge would uh, be enough to disturb the uh, grid circuit on the output tube. So you can't even have a tiny leak here. Radio Corporation, a place called B. Klein, New York. B. Klein, B apostrophe K, what is that? B apostrophe K L Y N. Where is that? B apostrophe K L Y N. 
<laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Let's check him out and see if he's any good. Starting at, it says 25 here, if you can read it, it's actually 50 volts. So 50 volts on the capacitor. You can see the eye only partially opened. So this one's worse than the last one, bad actor. And this is in, the, this is the uh, blocking capacitor. Ooh, that's not good. Now that might explain why the output was low. It could also explain why the output tube is worn out. It may have wore out the output tube prematurely by allowing too much uh, steady state current flowing through it all the time because the uh, grid isn't biased negative enough, it's being pushed positive. I think I can read the number right there. And interesting, when I look at it through the magnifier, I can't see a thing. But with my eyes, I can see it. Come on, that can't be the case. That is the case. Well, that's really odd. It's easier to see what it says there, 0 0.01, easier to see with my eye. At two eyes, I'm using both eyes. Okay, um, 0 0.01. Let's just take a peek at that uh, schematic again. So this is the one we think we're doing. Oh, see, see, there's no values here, and when I go to the table, this won't be described properly. So remember C9, let's try it out, C9. here say C9.005 but I'm seeing a 0 0.01 audio coupler um, yeah output plate bypass output uh, mm. I don't I think it would have to be called an audio coupler but so may, maybe positionally it's incorrect so let's look at the other Another diagram here showing the part locations. Here we are. Okay, so this is looking underneath the radio. And the part I just grabbed is this one, which is part number seven. Okay, so we go back to the parts list here. Go part number seven, point oh one. Output plate bypass. Output plate bypass. Let's look back on the schematic. What's it actually doing there? No, schematic, jump, schematic, schematic. Whoop, what happened? I think my batteries are getting low in my uh, mouse. Okay, output plate. C. Well, see, that doesn't add up, does it? Here it is. I don't get it. I mean, we'll replace it with the same size and move on. And I, I'm not exactly sure what I'm replacing, but I think it's this one here. C9. Okay. Okay. Next one I'm going to go after is this one here. According to the uh, diagram, uh, this is the... Uh, AVC, they call it a filter capacitor. Um, you can see one, one leg goes right down to the chassis. And so that's that end. The other end is right near this coil here. I'm just a little worried about the wire. Right in there, wow, it's a very, very fine wire right there. Let's see if I just leave a tidbit of wire. I'll do a test. Okay. There are you a 0 0.05. Yep, 0 0.05 written right there. Okay, let's give it a test. So this one um, affects the uh, the response time of the AVC voltage, how long it hangs on, and also is important in quelling any 
RF signals that may be traveling accidentally on that uh, AVC line because it's going right back to the grids on the first tubes and any signal on it can go in the tube get amplified okay we're on 50 what do you say it's shot that would be a shot one so the, you know it's a larger physically larger so it's not surprising there's more leakage in it is it I don't think it's surprising She's a Dutton. Um, if this were leaking really bad, uh, could pull could pull down or interfere with the AVC voltage, I suppose. Um, this is on the far, usually on the far side of a very large resistor from the detector where the DC voltage is being generated. And you get across to the other side, you're in a high impedance circuit, and just leaking a little charge out of it might drop the voltage. Drop it, make it less negative. So what did I say this was? A point oh, well, I forgot already. Point oh two, point oh five. What did I say it was? Point oh five, didn't I? Point oh five. And I happen to have my uh, point zero zero fives sitting here. Okay, I'll get the capacitor and install it. Okay, just one, one more to go. Ah, this one here. Okay, let's give them a test. Now it does seem like the uh, schematic I'm using is just, and the information that goes with it is just not valid. Uh, I'm not studying it close enough to figure out if it's, is it the diagram or is it me? Maybe it's just me. Okay, 50 volts. What do you do? You are shot. That's two very bad capacitors and two bad capacitors. Okay, so what did I say this was? 0.02. So I'll stick a 0.02 in, and you know what? It's time to try the radio again after that's in. So, uh, through curious. Uh, means I've ended up with these capacitors here, which are 0.02, and I'm, you know, they're old style molded ones, but they look brand new, so I really don't know the history of these. I don't, couldn't even tell you how I got them exactly, but we're going to test its capacitance here, one of them. They look fine. Let's see. So 21 nanofarads, same thing as 0.02 microfarads, and that's what these are rated as, 0.02, and the V loss measured in this instrument is zero. Well, let's put it on the big capacitor checker. This is, it says on it it's rated for 600 volts. So we can we can really get this guy the works here. Let's see what happens. How new is it? Okay, starting with 50 volts and watching the eye. Here we go. Right open. 150. Right open. 250. Right open. 350 right open. 450. Right open. Hey, brand new. Don't touch that anybody. Don't, don't grab that capacitor. This instrument, when you're finished doing the test and you let go of this spring-loaded knob, it goes back to this normal setting, puts a short on the capacitor. I kind of leave a short on for roughly the length of time that you use to charge it. So this, this, this should be completely dead now. Hey, let's do a little calibration thing. We'll measure the capacitance. It's a good capacitor. No leak. I can measure the capacitor. Let's check it out. It's supposed to be 0.02, so it should be on this scale. 
swing the knob until it pops open right here. That's the spot, basically straight up. What is straight up? Can you can you see what it says there? It says, it says 0.02. Bang on. What a capacitor checker. Holy smokes. Dead on. Well, that is great. I think we're done with that for today. So I'm going to put this guy in. Look, I'm still not touching the leads. Put this guy in. Where, where did it come from? Oh no, I've done it. <laughs> I've, yeah, I left the leads in. Yeah, it goes in here. It goes down here. Yeah. Okay, I'll put that in and then we're going to test the radio. Okay, just about ready to operate the radio. Uh, the light now. The light is up in here and it looks like it's. No, it's easy to get out. I think I got to bolt this chassis back onto this plate here before turning on the radio because I'll bet you it's looking for that connection. I gotta get rid of this old capacitor here. Let's see if I can just kind of rip it off. Yep. burn mark there. Okay, that lightens the load a little bit. You can see this diode here, and you can see that this one is disconnected here. So someone has replaced this with this kind of diode. Now they may have added a dropping resistor. Is this resistor burned up? Let's take a closer look at that. My other camera, though. Oh, it's a drip of solder. It's not burned up. Well, we'll just leave it there. No, it's not burned up at all. Don't know if that looks pretty new. These two resistors look awfully new. Could be they were replaced at the time the uh, diode was installed. There's the diode. Okay. I think we're good to go here. What? No, there was something. There was something. So also the ground from the antenna, the wire that came off. I got a clip lead ready here. And I just want to clip it to something good. It's kind of long now, but I'm going to clip it here. Oh yeah, I was going to put a screw in. That's right. That's right. I was going to screw back at least one corner of this radio. Because you're probably expecting it to be there. Two plates tied together. There's the nut. Oh, I just threw it. Just threw it. Oh, cheapers. Worry about that later. Now, is there anything shorting out here? Because this is hanging funny. The answer is no. I don't think so.
we're good to go. Okay. Ground this guy. There. Ooh, it's a little close to this connection. I don't think I want it quite there. Just anywhere. it's grounded on here. Why, why don't we follow suit? Let's ground it right on this thing. Why don't we do the same? Okay, I think I think now we're ready for a test of the radio. Volume control is here. Turn it down. Tuning, I can just do like this. Oh, look how loose this is. Got a mind of its own. Okay, so I want this down like that. I think we're good to go. Okay, we're going to rely on the dim bulbs as usual. Keep things safe. Radio is switched on. So as soon as I hit the switch, here we go. Everybody, stand back now. So the light, the light came on. Can you see the light down in there? Both came on. This radio's working already. Ooh, that does not sound good. Oh, that's the motor running. <laughs> I keep getting fooled by the motor. Okay, we got lots of volume here, so we've solved the volume problem. Let's tune around a little bit. Okay, so it's still operating. That's probably not appropriate here. Let's put it up like this. What are the chances of me picking something up with this radio right now? Something there, I'll go right by it. Yeah. Doesn't sound very good. Lots of swooshing going on. But, the radio's operating. Nothing seems to be going wrong. It's picking up something. Good. Okay. Now, the next step would be to do an alignment on this radio. Uh, I may leave that for tomorrow. Depends how much video I have. I don't know how much I have here. So I will check into that, but uh, I think this will be the end of the video. Tomorrow we'll do an alignment and put it all back together and uh, see what we got. So th thanks a lot for watching. Yeah, I've decided I'll do the alignment tomorrow. So thanks for watching.